Hello, this is a video presentation about editing CR2 RAW files in Digital Photo Professional 4 software from Canon. So far we haven't made much use of the recipe tool, but that's because we didn't have many pictures in the same kind of uh, area, but we will use it. So in here, um, in here, in here, what's the problem? This is a bit bright and the overall it's not that bad. So we're gonna crush the blacks a bit. Increase the... Oop. Increase the shadows. Yep. Reduce the brightness. Color temperature again will go to 6700. That brings out the details of her red shirt quite nice. Um, um, let's leave it like that. Maybe increase the saturation a tiny bit. Nah, we'll have to reduce the reds because this picture is quite red. Yeah. And reduce this thing just a tiny bit. All right. Let's see if we can use the recipe on this one, but I, I doubt it. Uh, it. Does a job pretty nice. We'll just increase the brightness a bit. Yeah. And reduce the highlights. Because yeah, this part is too bright, so we're going to do this like that. I don't like this picture at all. I'm not sure why I selected it, to be honest. But I like the um, how it showed the outside of the tent with its plastic windows. Next one, terribly overexposed. So again, we're moving way in here. Um, we're going to reduce the highlights. There it is. The sky is lost almost completely, but you can see some shadow, some clouds appearing. And nothing we can do about that. We're gonna up the shadows just a tiny bit. And move just a little bit in here to brighten the picture. Yeah. Very narrow band of tolerable lighting in here. Again, color temperature 6700. That makes a lot of difference. And we're going to increase the saturation just a tiny bit. We could use the blue just a tiny bit. So increase the highlight, make the sky at least resemble blue. It will make everything else more green, yellow in fact, green and red, right? Because you reduce the blue, so then that's what you do. But really what you want to be doing let me reset that, and I thought of that recently. What you want to be doing is reducing the red and the green in the highlight. It will have exactly the same effect, but it will still reduce the luminance of, this, of these areas, and thus recover more details. So when we reduce the uh, levels of green and red for the highlights, we have to remember you need to up the, the middle part because then you'll lose all those details in here, make it more like rainy day. So add a control point in here, in the middle somewhere, and just reduce these things a lot. Good. So now, the next picture is quite similar and what we have to do. So now we'll try to use the copy recipe. <clears throat> Paste it. And it's too green, right? Way too green. So we're going to reduce the green of it. Reduce the green levels. Now that's nice. Now <clears throat> don't, if sometimes you make your change and you don't see that much effect, but wait until you see this small icon of a wheel turning here 
the processing is not done, so don't go haywire on your picture because sometimes it's just maybe not necessary. Yep, be really delicate in here. We don't want our face to be really red, but they were red in fact because it was hot. So, yeah. And now it is a bit too dark, so we're gonna up the shadows even more. Now it's a bit. Yeah. Mm, now I'm gonna reset this one. I don't like this. I don't like this at all. So, I'm going to reduce this thing a little bit, and for the red as well, so we're way too red on our faces. There we go. There we go. Okay. Uh, we're going to reduce the saturation, saturation of red as well. Now it makes more sense. Let's copy this recipe and apply it to this picture. Wait until this icon disappears. The more changes you make, obviously, the, the, the more difficult it's going to be and more for the program to do the processing and therefore it will last longer. So, In this case, I don't like how the sky looks and um, yeah, it's a difficult shot. So we're going to... Yeah, we cannot do much more with this thing. What's the problem here? It's a bit too green, really. You can use this uh, fine tune of the of the overall hue tool. Yeah, just just shift it, so you don't reduce any specific color. You just shift the entire tone to some other color. Color temperature it's sixty seven hundred, but that may be the problem here. Yes. All right, and maybe increase the saturation just a little bit. No, because the green is too green. We're gonna move the green to yellow, make it more natural. There it is, and yeah, we'll leave the saturation. So that is it. That's it, good. Now the sky is still burned out. It doesn't look like sky at all. So what we need to do is again reduce the red part. You can remove a control point by just clicking on it and just pressing delete on your keyboard. So let's do this thing. Let's do green. And green will just reduce. The higher you point, point your con you place your control point, the less of the picture will be affected by the change. And we just want to Reduce not oh, too much, too much. There it is. There it is. Red is really prominent in here, so we just want to make sure the sky looks blue. There it is, and then just increase the red to give us back some color. Good. Maybe we can increase the. Uh, brightness a bit. And that looks tolerable. Way better than this thing. It's a bright picture so we can afford to get some brightness in here. Alright. Yep. And you also want to make sure you kind of maintain your level throughout the pictures. You'll probably present these in series, so make sure the grass in here looks kind of like this one. Or maybe other way around, you want this grass to be more like this one. So what we're going to do in here is reduce the green to yellow. You see? Now it's more like it. And in here I see our faces are again too red. So I'm gonna drop the redness of the overall picture. There it is. I'm going to reduce the saturation even further, make it more yellowish. 
the hue control is really powerful, especially if one color is dominant in your picture. Okay, these look pretty nice. I think I'm going to reduce the luminance RGB of this one still a bit. Can't make up my mind here. Let's give us back some color a bit in here. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to the next one. This one. This one is going to probably be something like ah, again. No, it's because this one is underexposed in a lot of areas. So we can't use the recipe, but we can use. I'll jump to this one because the recipe. I remember this scene was pretty similar, so we copy this recipe and we're going to apply it in here. There, instantly better. You see, that's that's the power of the recipe copying. And that's why you should actually edit your pictures in bulk, because you'll remember, ah, I just edited a similar scene, like this one and this one, so I know I can apply a similar effect in here. What I'm going to do a bit more in here is I'm going to uh, reduce, I mean, retain some more details from the shadows and increase the saturation a bit, even further, because this picture is just nice. Let's maybe quickly do this one. So in here the saturation is too low. We're going to up the shadows all the way. Let's see how powerful that is. And crush the blacks, crush the whites. That will increase the saturation just where I want it to be, in, somewhere around here, right? And then simply increase the saturation. Uh, be careful with the sky, so we're going to make the sky a bit darker. I'm going to shift the hue of the blue and the aqua will also go to bluish. There it is. That's well, what I like. Maybe reduce the saturation just a tiny bit. We don't want the windows look, right? The windows wallpaper look. Unless that's what you're going for then, obviously. And let's look at them side by side. You see this is much more appealing. This is actually more, more saturated. And that's how it actually looked like. It's just that the camera couldn't handle all the contrast. Um, that's why you need to correct for that. That's how I actually remember it. So let's now move to the next picture. And this is uh, 1456. Um, this one is uh, quite okay. We'll bump up the shadows just a little bit and dump down the highlights, but you don't need to do much in here. What we will primarily need to do is crush the blocks just a little bit to make it, to increase the contrast really. Make it more clear. You can also use um, the contrast slider in the advanced section of the gamma correction to increase the contrast. It will, if you look at the curve, if you adjust the slider here, it will also um, have an effect on the display on the curve of of, um, of the graph above, but we'll leave it like that, and we'll also increase the saturation just a tiny bit to make it more attractive. There it is. We can move the yellow to uh, green to yellow side just a little bit to make it less um, seem less green. And the, um, yep. And the orange to red. Now it's just has more life in it, but don't overdo it. <laughs>